So let's discuss the functional anatomy of the nephron. In this lesson, we're going to go through some of the main parts of the nephron that have to do with the portion where blood actually gets filtered into the nephron and that you need to know for the MCAT because these things are going to come up again and again as we go through some of the functionalities of the nephron as well. So I'm going to go through a list of terms and then kind of go through the image as well to help you actually see what this looks like in the drawing and kind of, you know, localize your brain so that you know what's going on. The first part is Bowman's capsule. So the, this is a capsule that surrounds the glomerulus. This is what Bowman's capsule looks like. So we have that Bowman's capsule is actually this entire area that goes, actually maybe I'll highlight that, that goes all the way around the glomerulus. And so the glomerulus or the glomerular capillaries are located right here. So it is a collection of capillaries that are kind of all bunched up together that is where blood comes from that actually gets filtered into the nephron. This is what I say here, the glomerulus is a network of small capillaries that filter plasma into the kidneys. So next we have the afferent arteriole, and we talked about this earlier in a previous lesson, and the afferent arteriole is the blood vessel that brings blood into the glomerulus. So we see this here, the afferent arteriole is right here, blood is coming from bigger arteries and they branch into smaller arteries until they become an afferent arteriole. Every nephron has its own afferent arteriole and that's bringing blood into the glomerulus like this. Eventually this afferent arteriole will become small enough that it's called a capillary, a glomerular capillary, and then it'll become thicker again and leave the nephron. Filtrate is the fluid that is filtered through the glomerulus into the proximal tubule. The proximal tubule is this part right here. So essentially, let me erase some of these things and we'll follow the path of blood as we would find it. So blood would come in through the afferent arteriole. It will then be part of the glomerular capillaries. Blood will be going through the glomerular capillaries. And as that's happening, there is fluid and glucose and ions that are going to come out past through from the glomerular capillaries to this Bowman space right here, which is essentially the space right underneath the uh, Bowman's capsule. And it will then go through the proximal tubule into the next parts of the nephron. So the proximal tubule is this area right here that the filtrate goes into, the filtrate goes into. And then this is a nice segue into talking about Bowman's space. So Bowman's space is the area within the Bowman's capsule where the filtrate passes through on its way to the proximal tubule. So we see the Bowman's space is this area right here. So everything around the glomerulus. So there are barriers, there are different cells that make sure that big things that are in circulation don't pass into Bowman space, things like cells and big proteins, those all stay in the capillaries, they stay with the plasma, but smaller things like water and electrolytes and glucose, those actually filtered, they are they become the filtrate, they filter into the Bowman space. And then we have the efferent arteriole, which we see right here, and it's the blood vessel that takes blood away from the nephron, the glomerulus, and so, the blood after it has gone through the glomeruli, you know, went through the capillaries and a bunch of stuff came out, whatever is left over will come out through the efferent arteriole. So afferent is going towards the nephron, efferent coming out of the nephron. Now there are a few more cells that I want to mention that are also important. They're not as high yield for the MCAT, but nevertheless we should talk about them. And those are the cells of the juxtaglomerular apparatus. I know it's a big word. I usually refer to it as the JG apparatus because it's much easier to say. The juxtaglomerular apparatus is a specialized structure and it's composed of a few different things. So let's look down here to understand what it looks like. So we know that the nephron has a portion that is kind of far away from the glomerulus that's called the distal convoluted tubule. But the distal convoluted tubule actually loops around and part of the distal convoluted tubule actually contacts the glomerulus, uh, and you can see that in this image right here. So there's a special part of the distal convoluted tubules that has um, some special cells. These cells are called macula densa cells. And then there are a few other types of cells that are located at this part. 
and together they form the juxtaglomerular apparatus. Notice how the JG cells or the JG apparatus is in contact with the afferent arteriole. The afferent arteriole is actually right here. The blood is coming in in this direction. And that's because the JG apparatus actually functions to help regulate blood pressure and filtration rate. So it has an impact on the afferent arteriole such that if it's more constricted or less constricted, that actually controls the amount of blood that's going to the glomerulus and therefore it controls the rate of filtration. Filtration of things from the glomerulus into the as you know into the filtrate. So as I mentioned there are also these cells called macula densin cells that are part of the distal tubule and they're a little bit different than the other uh, tubule cells and they are the ones that come in, co in contact with the afferent arteriole and so they are there to monitor filtrate osmolarity and if the osmolarity of the filtrate is not appropriate then they can do things that um, make sure that things go back to homeostasis. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about what they are. I will leave that for a cheat sheet because this is this topic is not super high yield for the MCAT and there's already a lot for you to memorize, but I just wanted to leave this here for completion's sake. And there are also granular cells that are part of the JG apparatus that secrete renin, which is the first component in this cascade of the RAS system. Uh, remember that renin helps to convert some enzymes that all end up, you know, when the RAS system is overall activated, it helps to raise blood pressure and blood volume. So that's it for this introduction to the nephron. Let's dive deeper into the different parts of the nephron and what their functions are.